Hi, in this, the last episode on our making our own WAV player, we're going to look at how we can mix multiple sounds together. Roll the titles. Is that it? <sighs> So, what I can't believe is that in the last episode, all about adding a potentiometer, I didn't make one single knob joke. I mean, it's a no Ah, forget it. Bloody amateur. Anyway, so in this episode, we're going to make the software play more than one wav sound at the same time. Just get the hardware around again. You might ask why? What's the point in that? And from playing a music point of view, there isn't much of a point. But I come from a gaming standpoint. I've said the word point a lot there, haven't I? Never mind. Where you often need background music and several different sounds all happening at once. Here's a project I worked on around two years ago. You'll find a link up in the corner now, uh, which was a Frogger project that needed the ESP to play multiple uh, WAV sounds at once. If you click on that, you'll see a quick demo of it. And as you know from the last episode, flies and lady frogs are implemented. So to support that project, I wrote the DAC Audio software, which is a reasonably powerful library for playing WAVs over the SP32's DAC interface, DAC interface. But the DAC interface it can only handle 8 bits of sound, 8 bit sound. So sound quality was somewhat lacking. There had been several requests to move the library over to I2S over the last year and a half, or maybe a little bit longer, but a long time anyway. And hand in hand with that goes using SD cards, as the file sizes for 16-bit stereo sound are quite big, as we've seen in earlier episodes. And that's why this tutorial series was created as a starting point to the new library. So, Let's get on with the theory of mixing waves. Any waves, whether sound, electromagnetic, or water, all interfere with each other if they mix. Look at these two waves. The middle line is the lower energy or rest point of the wave, the zero point. Above is positive and below the line is negative. When two waves come together, and remember this, we can be talking about just simple water waves, and in this instance we're talking about sound waves. When two waves come together, they simply add together. Any positives that match up will get bigger. So if you have two positives, they're going to get bigger. And any negatives, if it's two negatives, they will grow bigger negatively as well. If a positive meets with a negative, then we'll get a reduced wave height. As our sound waves are just digital representations of these waves, we can do just the same. At the same point of one, two or more waves, we just add those digital values for each of them together and repeat for every single sample going through the R2S inter interface. So, not actually a complex task. Let's look at the, uh, the code for this. I've again kept this code as simple as I could, and it is just really proving the concept that it works. I would not normally write it like this, as it's fairly inflexible, but that aside, let's have a look. We will have two WAV files on RSD, imaginatively called WAV file 1 and WAV file 2. One will be a music WAV file, music score, and the other one will be a laser shot. One sounds like this. And the laser like this. You can imagine that when you press a fire button, you set the laser sound off to mix with already play, or with an already playing background track or other sounds that are going on in the game or whatever it is your project's doing. We set up two global variables here for them and in the setup. Just here, we set them both to repeat play 
and start playing right away. So both sounds are instantly going to be mixing. In our loop, we just call routine called play waves. And in play waves, this is very similar to the code from the last episode, by the way. We're just basically adding in an extra routine to mix the WAVs together before they go off to the r squared S interface. Although there are some changes to the read files functions as well, but the principles are the same as last time and I won't be recovering that. So coming down to mix WAVs, here's the workhorse loop. We go around both samples, getting the individual words of data from their own individual sample buffers that were read in earlier from the SD card, adding them together on this line and storing them into the main sample buffer, ready to send to the R2S. Let's demo it. On a plug-in, we should hear the background music with the laser sign continually firing as well. Perfect. As always, the full source code is available from a link in the description, as well as an affiliated list of all the parts that you see here. And that's it for this series of videos. I hope this has been useful for helping you understand R squared S and perhaps use it in your own code. My next task is writing a new version of the DAC Audio library for I squared S. It will have all the functionality of the original, but with higher quality sound and some extra features. And it will be this library that I will continue with going forward. The old library, the old DAC Audio library, will stay at its current version. And I do not anticipate it being updated. There are definite performance issues with the demos I've shown you so far which haven't been highlighted. If you want to, for example, if you want to stress your ESP32 with other complex code running at the same time, then, then it would probably have a problem. But most code would be fine. Just certain projects, like my Frogger project shown earlier, that would struggle as that really does push a lot of the ESP32. However, all this will be addressed we now release a new R squared S audio library and we shouldn't have them problems going forward. This new library release will take several weeks and I'm hoping to get other quicker videos out in the meantime. For now, thank you to my patrons who support me despite what I sometimes put out on the internet. Thank you for hitting that like. If you haven't and liked it, then poke your finger in that direction and of course, if you're new here, I would like to see more, then have a peek at that subscribe button. So I did that with pork and peek. Lastly, of course, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Till next time, see you later.